Uh, just wrapped up a conversation with Tony Maritato, and the topic was AI use in physical therapy. How could a clinician use artificial intelligence in your clinical practice? How could you use it in your business? How could you use it, I mean, geez, anywhere. AI, for me to say AI is going to be everywhere is a gigantic understatement. Mark my words here in October of 2023. It's already more places than you probably know. So get on board this train or get run over by it. I'm going to say that now and I'll be saying it again. I want to say thanks to some of our sponsors like Physiotech. Let me ask you a question. Would adding an additional $290 per patient per quarter help your business? Of course, it's, re it's rhetorical. Uh, Physiotech can help you do that. Remote therapeutic monitoring is the way. Find out how to get started with RTM at physiotech.ca. That's physiotech.ca. I'm going to do that again because I screwed it up. Physiotech physiotec.ca. There we go. Third time's the charm. Um, modern all-in-one outpatient EMR. If you're thinking about switching, if you're not absolutely in love with the thing that you're touching that many times in an EMR, you deserve to love it. Uh, all-in-one outpatient portal, marketing automations, billing features you want at a great value. That's our friends at MW Therapy. Find them online at mwtherapy.com. We're switching your EMR is easy. And finally, our friends at ATI. One of the leaders in clinical research within the profession of PT, with more than 900 of their clinics placing in the 100th percentile in CMS's merit-based incentive program for the second consecutive year. If you want to join their team and jumpstart your new career, visit ATIPT.com. All right, welcome back to another game-changing episode of PT Pinecast. I'm physical therapist Jimmy McKay. Today we're diving deep into a topic that's revolutionizing healthcare as we speak, whether you want it to or not. You could fight against it, but it's here. And the topic is artificial intelligence, or AI, as the cool kids are calling it. Now, don't tune out because you think it's all techie and it might be over your head. We can bring you nice and slow. The unique episode format we're going to we're going to use today. You're going to love this. My guest today and I will each present three innovative ways physical therapists can harness the power of AI to enhance their clinical practice. And we're not just throwing out ideas. We're going to break down the how, the what, and in some cases, even the how much it might cost to implement this. So whether you're a tech novice or a savvy early adopter and you're deep into AI, you're walking away from this episode with six actionable strategies to get ahead of that AI curve. There's still time to get ahead of this paradigm uh, shift. So pour yourself a pint and let's get started. Welcome back to the show. Uh, no stranger to the program, Tony Maritato. Tony, welcome back. Jimmy, thank you so much for having me back. So we're calling this the PT Pint Cast six pack, right? You're bringing three ideas. I'm bringing three ideas. I am no math major, but I just, I just, just checked AI and three and three. In fact, when you add them together, it doesn't, it does equal six. Awesome. So what I'm hoping to do for everybody watching, um, these are things that I'm doing today. It's not like, okay, where's AI going to take us? Right. How is it going to imprison us? It's this is stuff I'm using AI today in my practice every single day. And, and when I post on social media, you know, the, it runs the spectrum from there are therapists using it every day, just like me, to therapists who have never even downloaded anything or opened the app or done anything with it. Right. So I'm excited. I want to see what kind of overlap we have. I've got about 20 ideas to share. So if you throw out one that I've already got, I'm just going to pick another one. I like that. Um, and I have to say full disclosure, and I have to ask this first. Did you use AI to help generate some ideas? I didn't at first, <laughs> but funny you say that because absolutely yes. afterward, like an hour of writing down ideas, I was like, wait, wh why don't I just ask chat GPT? And so I did and it gave me some great information. All right. So do you, I, want, I want you to go first. So what is your first way to actionably use AI in your physical therapy, clinical practice, business practice, however you want to frame it? Yeah, let, let's start with the most boring, right? The most practical, boring day to day, and we'll get more exciting as we get through the episode. Um, reviewing policies and procedures. So like I'm a practice owner. If anyone doesn't know me, my name's Tony Maritato. I'm a physical therapist, private practice owner, have been for 22 years. And so one of the things that I use on a regular basis is I use ChatGPT4. I do have a paid account, yeah. $20 a month. And basically what I'll do is either I'll plug in 
the, let's say, Aetna reimbursement policy for physical therapists. I'll have it read and process all of that information. I mean, pages and pages and pages of information. And then I'll start bouncing questions and ideas off of the chat. Now, again, if somebody doesn't understand how this works, the way chat GPT functions is it's a large language model, but basically there's a chat, you can have separate chats. So I will train an individual chat on an individual insurance policy so it doesn't get confused. Smart. I will use a free plugin called WebPilot. It comes with ChatGPT4. It allows me to access websites in real time. So I'll say, you know, chat, go ahead, read this URL, process the information, and then be ready because I'm gonna ask you a bunch of questions about it. And then I might ask questions about medical necessity. I might ask questions about, you know, wording for different things. I might ask if I'm allowed or able to do this or what, what does this policy say related to this specific scenario? Um, but it gives me a way to start customizing decisions, policies, procedures for Aetna, which is different than Humana, which is different than Medicare. And that's always been one of my gripes with a commercial EMRs in general is I never understood why when I choose an insurance plan inside the EMR, why that EMR doesn't then customize and create documentation templates, frameworks, mm -hmm. policy decisions for that specific insurance plan. I understand there's hundreds and hundreds of insurance plans and policies, but some of the big ones, we have all of the information available, like let's pull them into the documentation system so that I'm not using Medicare guidelines for workers' comp or personal injury. Each case is unique. So that's absolutely one of the bare bones, like basic fundamentals for business is AI now becomes a version of my attorney, a version of my compliance department. They're never going to replace humans, but at least it gives me a, a step in the right direction. It, it's, it's, it's how I've explained it to people who haven't begun using AI. It, it lets you have really informed, not perfect, but really informed conversations with a virtual assistant. This, this right. assistant, you are specifically educating it. And there's videos out there because you, you mentioned a different plugin that you can, you, there's various things you can plug into AI to do things like go to a website and understand things, but it allows you to have a really informed, educated conversation about specific questions that you have. So yeah, right. you could spend time digesting all these things and becoming an expert in it, but man, it saves you time and lets you, lets you customize questions for solutions that matter to you. Yeah. All right. So that's one, that's your, that's your boring one. That's, that's a pretty that's good, use. Boring that's one. a pretty good use of AI. All right. So I guess I'll start with a boring one or I, I guess the low hanging fruit. And again, this is for $0 because you can use chat GPT for free, or I, I'll just close as well. I have the $20 plan because it feels like for 20 bucks a month, I'm getting more than $20 worth of value. And I'll start with an AI driven treatment planning. Now, here's the idea. Utilize AI machine learning to analyze past patient outcomes and suggest the most effective treatment plans. Now, again, I'll reiterate, I don't think AI is going to completely replace humans. I think it will make it really difficult for humans who aren't harnessing AI to compete with humans who are utilizing this tool. So how this one might actually work is based on the history. And again, you can train different chats in chat GPT or there are other, there are other AI uh, language models as well. You can, tr you can train them on a history of a specific um, patient and their progression and outcomes, and then the AI can suggest or help you to suggest a treatment plan likely to yield the best results. Similar to what you were saying with the insurance uh, regulations, you could be uploading CPGs, clinical practice guidelines or best practices, or, oh my gosh, you don't have time to read and synthesize thousands of pages of the latest PT research. You could do that with AI and have it become an expert for you, an expert assistant. So based on the history of this and what you teach it, it could, and this is where some people out there who are thinking about launching or have EMRs, it could be integrated into existing EHR systems. I don't think we're that far away. I think the people who run those are doing these things right now um, that you could utilize this integration with your existing patient data and EHR system, following that data 
and uh, adding in your own protocols, I think this is the low hanging fruit. Again, not replacing humans or your clinical uh, decision making, but man, isn't it fun to have a conversation? We do this all the time in journal clubs, having conversation. Hey, I got this patient just not getting just not getting the results I want. What do you think? And based on what you teach it or 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 have it learn, it could give you some things that would spark ideas for you. So let's build on that okay. because I, I want to give people watching a practical application because I agree 100%. Like that's one, that was one of mine that I'll replace with something else. But so in my system and everybody's system is going to be a little different. But I know the last time I checked and it's been years, I had about 20,000 cases in my database in what I use as an EMR. Now it's not an off the shelf EMR. We had built something in house years ago that we still use. Among those 20,000 cases, they all have diagnosis codes. So effectively, what I could do is run a report that gives me all of the cases that I've ever evaluated and treated for total knee replacement, since that happens to be my niche. And then from there, I could start generating each of the evaluations and plans of care as PDF documents. I can directly import those PDF documents into my chat GPT chat. So this chat is going to be trained specifically on how Tony Maritato does evaluations and writes plans of care for total knee replacements. Right. And then from that data, whether I want to pull a hundred or a thousand or however many I want to pull, one of the cool things that came out about ChatGBT a year ago, year and a half ago was you could tell it to write in the style of this celebrity yeah. or this personality. Yeah. So now what I do is I say, write this response in the style of Tony Maritato, because all of these evaluations and plans of care you just processed are in the style of Tony Maritato. And I could start to train that to look for consistencies within what I'm doing, look for, you know, maybe redundancies that could be eliminated, look for inefficiencies, and then taking that and then importing the Medicare guidelines for uh, what are the requirements for utilizing therapeutic activity? What are the requirements for utilizing therapeutic exercise for manual therapy? What's the clinical justification, which Medicare publishes? I can put those two together and say, now kick me out a list of function-based activities mm. that, you know, physical impairments, functional activities with associated goals that are compliant with the published Medicare guidelines that are also congruent with what Tony Maritato has been using for the last 22 years. And, and that literally you can do that right now. Like the technology is there, the functionality is there. I do that before we jumped on this show, I went and downloaded the Brigham and Young Women's Hospital rotator cuff repair post-op protocol. I had chat analyze the protocol. I had chat go in and look at the Medicare guidelines for CGS, which is my Medicare Mac for how I choose the interventions that I'm going to use in my plan of care. And I had it spit out a framework for me. And I use that word intentionally, a framework, because I'm going to be adding and customizing it, but a framework that gives me the clinical justification based on these findings for this particular condition, based on Medicare guideline, article this, reference that, this is what we're gonna be looking at for the first six weeks of you know post-op uh, treatment plan for rotator cuff repair. And like, that could be done by me, but it's way faster to be done by chat. And then I can go in and tweak it and modify it. And I did, I had to go in and be like, Hey, Chad, this isn't, you know, a function. This is an impairment. I want you to also give me function as examples of functions. Let's use these dressing, bathing, grooming, feeding. And so then it reprocessed the original response to give me exactly what I was looking for yeah. with the words and the terminology. I don't write that clearly. Right. I, I writing is not my forte. So it takes what's in my brain puts it into a usable format that a reviewer can look at upon audit and be like, Oh, piece of cake. Check, 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 check hundred percent, you know, and I pass wow. the review. Wow. This also brings up with, uh, uh, it makes me think we write in EHRs to be defensible, right? Mm -hmm. We write to make sure right. we've documented so we can prove in the short term, get paid for what we're doing. Um, but what you just suggested was how could I improve clinically based on what I've right. done 
based on these rules, whether they be clinical or insurance wise, it's, um, it's helping not it's learning about what you do, how you do it in the style of Tony Maritato within these rules that I've just taught you, but it's able to give suggestions like right. based on this information, not just based on something it found online, based on previous style and previous goals and previous outcomes, it's able to suggest things. That's the difference between, and this is where some people start to wrap their head around it. This is intelligence, that I is intelligence, right? It's not just Googling something and finding something somewhere that someone wrote previously. This is able to think. And that's like, the, that's the thing I try to get people to wrap their heads around. Someone asked me, hey, how do we, how do we game the system in AI when, when someone out there asks, what's the best thing to do if my knee hurts? How do we make sure PT is the answer? And my response was, make sure PT is the answer then AI will suggest PT. So I want people to wrap their head around this. This isn't a system to be gamed with SEO or, or things like that. This is intelligence that you can harness. So wow, way to yes and my, my first suggestion. I like that. Awesome. So now let me hit my second suggestion, which I think most everybody is expecting, which is creating content, right? Yeah. Creating blog posts, writing articles. And it builds on what we just shared, which is, when for, when it first came out, I think everybody thought, oh, cool, I'm going to tell it, write me an article about shoulder pain. It's going to spit out 1500 words and I'm going to be done. And that wasn't the case. And that's still not the case. So my procedure today, I am publishing roughly three articles a day. Each of those articles are topic specific. Each of those articles are about a thousand to 2000 words. Um, but I never publish an article without training the specific chat. Okay. So my standard procedure, and I won't go too deep is I do my own keyword research because chat GPT and most AIs are terrible with keyword research. So I still do that as a manual process. I do my own keyword research. I determine the topic silo that I want to write content about. And then I start to go into that topic silo. And I say that because it's a combination of multiple articles, multiple keywords on a single topic. Um, but what I do is so one of the more recent ones was about saunas, infrared saunas and different kinds of saunas. That was kind of the general topic. Um, I go to PubMed. I start looking at research. I try to select. Now, I'm not a researcher, but I do try to select the best possible research that I can find. I feed that research into my chat so that I'm training the chat on the most current relevant topics that I can find. And then what we do is together, chat and I, we're like, hey, this is this is the article we want to write. This is the keyword that I want to optimize that article for. Now I go through a process where I say, who do you think is the perfect reader for this information? What is the search intent behind somebody looking for this information? You know, talking about a personal story from your situation, Jimmy, is I've got a good friend here in town. She's doing non-medical companion care stuff. So I was like, you know, why don't we look at some real life scenarios that you could go out and help people with? And I said, okay, Chad, I want to write an article on non-medical companion care. I want you to give me scenarios for like the best possible situation for this. Give me an avatar for the reader of this content. How is this content going to help that person the most? What is the one thing that that person is going to take away from this article? Then the chat creates the article outline based on I review it, make sure this is what I want. Maybe I change a couple of things here. Then I start plugging in. I tell the chat use HTML code to create a table of content. So I have jump links to optimize for SEO. Then I say, write one section of this article at a time. So I have time to review. Sometimes if I'm feeling really ambitious, I say, I want you to act as a ghost writer for me. I want you to ask me one question yeah. pertinent to each section in this article. And I want you to use my response within the content of the article, use it as a quote or use it to build that section of the article, maintaining my tone of voice. And so it's a reporter interviewing me. It asked me a question about my experience and clinical history and stuff like that. I give it my contribution. It has the PubMed articles for reference. Right. And between all of that, it creates an incredible 15 to 2000, 1500 word to 2000 word article with cited references, with external links, with internal links, with resources. 
And now, if you guys don't realize, inside ChatGPT, you can turn on Dolly. I don't remember what number it is. But so I can also say, create a graphic, sure. create an image specific to this article for whatever. Um, I did one talking about companion care where I was looking at, I wanted two people walking in a park near a lake with three dogs. And it created a graphic for me that was relative to that article. It's crazy. <laughs> so, it's crazy. I mean, it, it's not the kind of thing where it's plug and play. Yeah, that takes a lot of work, but that takes me an hour. On average, I've timed it multiple times. I'm putting in about an hour to create a really high quality embedded videos, embedded images, you know, links, everything optimized for SEO. Um, that uh, prior, about a year ago, a little over a year ago, I spent $7,500 to pay writers right. to generate 100,000 words of content, which I can do now for 20 bucks, 20 bucks a month. Right. I can generate 100,000 words a month with still treating patients in the clinic and running my business and doing all the other stuff. So getting that capacity to create content that optimized for Google is just completely changed the face of my business. And that is exactly what I'm doing right now. So content creation, but what I think you're highlighting is a lot of people picked up, myself included, you know, six months ago when I started playing with artificial intelligence was write me an article about back pain and then copy and paste the result. Right. And that yeah. is using it, in my opinion now, how you're explaining it, it's showing how people can use a hammer to open a can of tuna fish, which is <laughs> you're using this really powerful tool that you could be building a house with and you're using it to open a can. So you can do that. Right. You can say, write me an, an article about back pain, but the sophistication of the things it could be doing for a good return on investment in terms of time and learning how to use this tool. Again, you could hand me a hammer or my neighbor, Justin, a hammer. You're going to get two different houses. Do not buy the house that I create you, right? But you can learn how to use this tool to leverage and create content. Um, so that was, that was your suggestion. Of course, I was going to say content creation is one of my suggestions. I still will. And here's why, is I think you can do a lot of things. You focused on words, article, SEO, keywords. I think there's so much you can do in content creation. That's why I'm not going to change one of my answers right now, Tony. I'm going to stick with content creation. I'm going to give two examples. Number one, I love talking to people. I mean, if you listen to this show for any amount of time, I love talking to people. A lot of times when you interview people, I mean, I've been doing, I was in radio for close to 15 years, been doing podcasting for eight I'm not a math major, but that's a lot of years. What I love to do is to get to the real person as quickly as possible, right? But this is a human, so you got to warm them up. So not only what to ask, in what order to ask, how you're asking, so verbal, nonverbal, paraverbal, all these communication uh, techniques. And I want to do it in a way that I can get the most out of that person as quickly as possible because I, I also am paying attention to my time afterwards. I don't want to have to do a ton or any editing in the in the post-production world right so what wow. i do is i have that guest talk to me and i'm using air quotes for podcast talk to me as much as they can so i will go into if the person has a robust online presence i will start to teach a chat about that person i'll find bios now a lot of this stuff is pretty generic right but at least i like to to give background i'll go one step further it's how i used to use tech to get to an episode a little bit warmer and faster, which is I use a platform called JotForm. Uh, Google Forms is a different, you know, you've all experienced that. And I'll ask similar, I used to ask similar questions than a Jimmy Fallon producer would ask before Nicole Kidman would come on the show. What I'm really asking is the same question 15 different ways. I'm trying to get what are you excited about right now? What are you eager to talk about? What drives you? And then I used to have a uh, a guest rundown sheet. Here's what Tony wants to talk about this month. Let me get in the mindset of that so I can generate questions that will get Tony to talk about those things. And I've told this to you and to other guests. I consider myself, I want to be the world's greatest batting practice pitcher. I want to serve up juicy fastballs that only that Tony can crush. So really, I'm just the assist guy. So how am I using AI for that is I'm still using a lot of these techniques, but now I'm including chat GPT as my producer to bounce some ideas off of. 
hey, listen, we went to the University of New England a couple weeks ago, so I wanted to make things Maine, Portland, uh, lobster roll. How could I incorporate the way that I'm asking the question in a funny kind of a twist? Now, I could spend all day doing this. It's what I used to do in radio, right? I'd spend all day thinking about an interview, but I don't have all day. But could I teach the AI how to do that? So I take all the information I can gather about the guest, the topic, and I go deep within that guest or within the field, and then I teach it, and then I say, great, you know the style of PT Pinecast, because again, I taught it that as well, and I write some really good prompts that I copy on my notepad on my computer, so I don't have to write them over and over again. I know the prompt I want to do, and I say, hey, help me come up with a really great episode rundown sheet. Give me six questions I should ask in the order that will warm the guest up and get them talking so the episode builds. I don't start with the most complex question, and I've taught my AI that. So in terms of content creation, I'm using it differently than, than Tony, but I wanted to still include it, which is I'm helping it to base my interview, this thing that I have a skill on, but I'm trying to teach ChatGPT and how I do it and then how we can do it uh, together. You mentioned Dolly, which is crazy. I've, uh, in a different form of, of content creation, I've used Canva. So I like quotes. I love quotes, history, movies, music, anything. And I thought, could I create a lot of quotes? Well, of course, I could just go, give me 52 quotes of famous people that sound inspirational, yada, yada. And then I could copy, paste, and yada, 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 and take that and put it into Canva, make pr pretty graphics. Well, it turns out you can connect the two different things. And you can do a, what's called a bulk create in Canva. There's videos out there. I'll, I'll, I'll connect you to them. Somebody's already done it better on YouTube. But what I was able to do is, hey, give me 52 quotes that sort of align with my values in rock radio music, in cool movies, in historical icons. Give it to me in two different columns. And now we get to something weird. It's not just going to be text. I made, it get, made ChatGPT give it to me in two different columns, where column A is the quote and column B is the person that said the quote. And then I want to be able to download it in CSV file, right? Comma space. And I was able to save it as that type of file. And I took that over to Canva with their bulk upload feature. I designed a pretty quote graphic in PT Pinecast colors. And I said, hey, here's the space where the A is going to go. And down here is the space is going to be is where B is going to go. Now create 52 of them. And Tony, wow. if you look at my Instagram feed now for the next 51 weeks, I have wis yeah. Wisdom Wednesdays where I've got a quote going out in the form of a post every single Wednesday at 8 o'clock. I did a year's worth of content for that one particular type of post. And it probably, and this is the first time I was doing it, probably took me 45 minutes to go from not right. just doing it, but learning it. The next time I do it, it's going to take me 20 minutes. And that's 52 weeks of something a different touch point to show, not tell people what I'm all about. So the fact that you mentioned content and I mentioned content, that's two of our six. I still think it's valuable because we could do another entire episode based on, yeah. and I think I will be doing it now that we're talking about this much, an entire episode based on just harnessing AI for content creation. That's amazing. I love the idea of training the chat on an individual, going out and finding all the resources about that individual, and then using it to help craft the right questions to pull the best elements out of that individual. Um, that's awesome. I love it. You know, just, just, you might already know this, but for the viewers watching, um, a lot of times what I'll do is I'll go into old YouTube videos with individuals. I'll pull the transcript because YouTube will automatically transcribe the video. You can pull the I'll transcript put, from a YouTube video? Yeah, yeah. YouTube automatically transcribes. I did not know that. You, you click, show me the transcript, Wow. copy it, paste it into the chat. If it's way too long, if it's an hour long episode, right. you do it in chunks but it'll process it and then you can pull the tone of voice. You can pull information from that transcript and you can have two or three, however many you want. Oh. Um, it's a really powerful tool. So again, you're getting, you know, what that person is talking about, topics that are pertinent to that person. You just made me uh, think like, Hey, in, 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 in 2007, during a lecture in South Africa, you said, yeah. quote, do you still stand by that? Like you could, you, Oh, wow. I didn't realize that. That's a great use. Yeah, yeah, it's it's super simple. I, I'll show you the way to do it. Um, my third, what's your three? Is I love using chat to look at other business models outside the profession and 
pull ways that we can use those elements into our business, yes. right? Yeah. I learn way more outside of PT about running a business that I can pull into the PT profession. So people watching, you probably saw, I shared an article about Starbucks. I was like, if Starbucks took their model and ran physical therapy clinics, what would that be like? What would the third space which Starbucks is famous for be like Starbucks functions more like a bank these days than a coffee right. house. They have billions of dollars on their gift cards that they have access to. Imagine if a physical therapy clinic utilized the methods of Starbucks to grow their business. Wow. What, what if we tapped into what airlines do, you know, forever, I've been talking about the reality that my 10 AM appointment on Monday, Wednesday, Friday should not be the same price as my 2 PM Tuesday, Thursday appointment. Um, but even outside of how airlines work, their pricing models and scarcity airlines make a bulk of their money from points and how they've turned points into a currency. Yeah. They make a boatload of money on that. So it's like, how can therapy businesses utilize those concepts, modify those concepts, bring them into our world so that we're not as dependent on third party reimbursement as we've always been. We're not as dependent on, you know, some of the factors that influence us, whether it's political or other. Um, so I love just saying, hey, if McDonald's owned a group of physical therapy clinics, how would those physical therapy clinics operate? What are the advantages that McDonald's uses that we could take advantage of? And so it's literally changed some of the programs and the way that I create new services, new offerings by looking at how other businesses do these things successfully. We read books, we watch videos, we listen to podcasts for this type of insight. This is why this is why a right. physical it doesn't make any sense for a physical therapist to listen to Masters of Scale podcast from Reed Hoffman, but it does because what you're looking to do is what I did. The, I give this presentation to PT students, which is like, hey, listen, all I did was connect two dots, right? Physical therapy was one of the dots, and radio happened to be the other for me. But what we know about geometry is you can connect two dots, any any two dots with a straight line you're supercharging it. You're not waiting for Reed Hoffman to say, what could physical therapy learn from McDonald's? You're going to AI and saying, act as if you were the CEO of McDonald's and you were going to open a PT clinic or now you're Starbucks or now you're American Airlines. Um, it, it allows you to do similarities and differences, which is what I love. What are things that don't matter that don't cross over? What are things that do matter and do cross over? And then what could I learn from them? And then what could I do from them? You can do those things this is not Tony saying it'd be great if we could, or one day we'll be able to, as you're hearing this right now, you've been able to do this for weeks and months and you just didn't know it, that it was at your fingertips. Yeah. Um, the third that I'll suggest, and this is, this is more generic, but it, it's been useful for me in that what I do is um, I help physical therapy clinics communicate, right? Create content, communicate and reach different people, whether that's for hiring, whether that's for reaching patients, to me, it's the same thing because it's, it's a human at the beginning. It's not a company. It's always a person communicating from a company and we're trying to reach a person. And in between is this thing called media, which, which is really just a medium. Now, where we can get stuck is if you have a Canva account or if you have a podcast or a YouTube channel is you have so many different things that you could do that you get overwhelmed with the ones that you should do or the ones that you want to do or the ones that get, get best results. So for me, my third and final suggestion is using AI as your expert content producer, as your person to bounce ideas off of. Like this is the thing that I that it took me a while to to wrap my head around is this thing is learning. It's learning about me. It's not going to fetch information off the internet and bring it back to me like a really great golden retriever. It is, go, it, is, it is able now to think. So I use it as an ideation machine. I will sit there and give it a similar prompt and say, give me, give me six ideas if this, was, if this was your problem based on all these parameters. Again, the better input, the more input specifically and volume that you give artificial intelligence, the better the output is going to be. So this isn't just write me, an, as you mentioned before, write me an article for 1500 words on back pain that's going to rank really great on Google. It will do it. Right. It will do it better if you give it different prompts. So I, I work from home. I work remotely a lot. I use this as the person because Tony, talking to myself 
gets me strange and funny looks. I'm able to talk to chat GPT and have conversations. And there's different ways you can implement voice technology with the laptop or phone that you use that you can input your voice. So yeah, sometimes I don't even type. Sometimes I'll sit here with this microphone I'm using and I'll talk to chat yeah. GPT. And then you can have talk chat GPT in Samuel L. Jackson's voice, if you've got the right uh, app, talk back. So I use it as an idea generator, a companion, a what if type of person. I just added a person on my payroll who is intelligent and learns faster than me or as fast as I teach it what I want it to learn. So my third and final is it's an extra brain that's terribly right. powerful that you can harness for free or for the low, low price of 20 bucks a month. So to me, yeah. that's been the that's been the most useful thing to me. Yeah, no, I, t I totally agree. And I love the voice of text. You know, that's it's crazy. something I didn't bring up earlier, but because I am so much more comfortable speaking rather than writing, yeah. Um, I use voice to text all the time. I use voice to text to read the responses from chat GPT about the questions I ask. Since I don't have a way right now today to do voice to text directly into chat, what I do is I do voice to text either onto a Google doc or a Google sheet, and then I just copy and paste it over, you know? So when I'm having chat function as a ghostwriter for me or as an, as a reporter, it gives me the questions I dictate into Google Doc and then I copy paste back into chat and it spits out the response. Um, I find that for me, that's the best workflow. But I did mention to Dave Kittle the other day, we did a similar uh, interview like this talking about AI in the future. And I said, you realize therapists have been talking about video forever, talking about, I wish I could just video record you know, the treatment session and that would be my documentation. Well, no payer is ever going to accept that. Nobody wants that. But going back to the tools and resources that are currently available, even if I just mic'd up and I shared a video on this years ago, if I just mic'd up, put a little la lapel mic, uh, task cam, you know, recorded the audio coming out of that session, then had that audio transcribed and processed by chat to pull out the most relevant elements of that session. I don't even have to do voice dictation anymore. Right. You know, I literally can just let chat record the session, then process it and give me out what was done, what's changed, what's different, what's new, like find the pieces of the conversation that are more, most pertinent to the specific payer guidelines. And now I've got my documentation transcribed for me in a relevant, efficient way. Yeah. Yeah. Saving time is definitely one thing. You can teach AI to do simple tasks. You can take longer amounts of time to make it, to teach it to do complex tasks. You can generate ideas that you might've gotten to, right? If you had 10,000 monkeys on 10,000 typewriters, eventually they'd write a, a you know, a, a bestseller. Um, but you can, you can generate ideas that you might not have gotten to. I mean, right. I've, I've done, I have just a, a chat that's just an ideation thread where every morning I'll just like, you know, uh, this idea came to me. I don't really know where it comes through, um, but help me figure out where I can put this into my podcast or into this organization's business. And it, again, it is, is not retreat. It's not a golden retriever bringing you back words. It is thinking. So it's smarter than your golden retriever. Not as cute yet, but it's smarter than your golden retriever if your golden retriever is Google. So let me do this as we're wrapping up, just for anybody who stayed on long enough, let me hit my quick list. I'm not going to go into detail. I'll just give the idea. So basically I was saying using it to, to recreate and improve policies and procedures, create documentation templates and frameworks, create email correspondence, obviously is a no brainer, write my ad copy for sales pages, uh, social media posts, Facebook, Instagram, analyze my media. So I would have it go back and read what's out there about me yeah. to give me information to see how other AIs are processing information about me. Use it to write code, HTML code, Google code. Uh, if I wanted to create formulas for something, blog content, analyze and summarize research and analyze other business models, process uh, post, post operative protocols and other treatment plans, stuff the APTA is putting out brainstorm media ideas, HEP instructions, like rewrite the stuff that I try to write that makes no sense to anyone right, right. in a Technical way writing. that people can understand. And just basically 
find ways for me to help improve and optimize the business systems. Yeah. You know, like those are things that I'm doing right now, yeah. every single day with the technology exactly the way it is. Yeah. And for, for me, mine was treatment planning, being able to use previous information to help generate either a plan or just some ideas for a plan. I went a little deeper into content creation because, again, I think we could do 20 ways you could use AI for, for mm -hmm. content creation and still have room for more. And the third is ideation or idea generation. It's a wall. It's an intelligence. It's a brain to bounce ideas off of and get, I mean, some insight you might not get because this thing learns. So it's going to know the, some of the same things that you do, but it's gonna you're going to teach it other things and you'll be able to leverage that. So a lot of people are afraid of AI. I can understand that. I've seen Terminator as well. I mean, I'm shocked it took us this long in this episode, episode to say the word Skynet. But um, <laughs> the AI will not replace people, in my opinion, or replace people who are not leveraging artificial intelligence. Where would you want people to go to interact with you, Tony? What do you want people to look at? And where should physical therapists who are listening to this interact with you? If you want to see samples of the kind of stuff that we're putting out with AI and these systems, go to choosept1st.com. Otherwise, you can always find me on Facebook, Anthony Maritato. I'm always available. Uh, Tony, appreciate your insight to this. Uh, I'm going to, once I'm done processing this episode, I'm going to go to ChatGPT. I'm going to feed it the transcript from this episode. And then I'm going to say, hey, what should we talk about with Tony next? Because it's already nice. going to learn what we talked about here and it'll extrapolate our next episode title. Love it. Tony, appreciate it. They say the best conversations happen at happy hour. Thanks for coming to ours. Like what you hear? Tell a friend or leave a review on iTunes or Google Play. The show today is brought to you by the Brooks Institute of Higher Learning, an innovator in providing advanced, post-professional education. The Brooks IHL offers seven on-site PT residencies, including orthopedics, women's health, geriatrics, pediatrics, sports, and neurology, as well as a neurologic OT fellowship, a competitive OMPT fellowship, and a speech therapy clinical fellowship. Therapists that complete a residency or fellowship through the Brooks IHL will markedly advance their knowledge and skills in a specialty area of practice. Learn more about how a residency or fellowship can help you advance your professional development at brooksihl.org. Our home on the internet. PTPinecast.com. Created by Build PT. Build PT provides marketing services specifically for private practice PTs. From website development and hosting. To providing content marketing solutions for PT clinics across the country. See what Build PT can do for you today at BuildPT.com. The PT Pinecast is a product of PT Pinecast LLC. It is hosted and produced by PT Pinecast CEO Jim McKay and CBO Sky Donovan from Marymount University. We talk PT, drink beer, and record it. This has been another pour from the PT Pinecast. The PT Pinecast is intended for educational purposes only. No clinical decision making should be based solely on one source. While care is taken to ensure accuracy, factual errors can be present. More on the show at ptpinecast.com.